Okay. Hi everyone. Good evening. Good day. Wherever you are, welcome to Hona Live Stream number twenty-eight, together with Federico Linari from Buenos Aires, from Argentina today. There are already people from Argentina tuning in, which is amazing. Um, yeah. So welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Yeah. Thank you for the invitation. Very happy to be. And it's. Really a big pleasure because we haven't seen each other for quite a while. I think the last time was uh, at the World Harmonica Festival. Yep, yeah. 2017. Right? Yeah. That's like long time, long time. basically three years ago. <laughs> yeah. And the weird thing is that we never really met each other at the Seoul Harmonica Festival. That's kind of crazy, right? Even, even though we, we both were there... Yeah, for yeah, like two or three times. <laughs> yeah. So maybe, hopefully, next year? I don't know. <laughs> sure. So, you know, of course, all I, of this I doesn't was, happen this I year. I was supposed to, to, to go to Asia. Yeah, like, me too. To be in Asia right now, you know, but crazy times. Yeah. So for those who don't know, Federico is one of the most accomplished jazz harmonica players on the diatonic harmonica. Um and also very advanced in classical music. Um, so, yeah, I'm afraid. If we're going to jam today, I think I had to practice a little more. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, but yeah, so thank you so much for tuning in. And if you have any questions for Federico, just let us know and write a comment in the chat. And yeah, Federico is yeah. also reading along, so... He can understand everything you write in Spanish because I don't understand. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. I, I, I can see here a couple of students that uh, really admire you. You know, uh, I love also teaching your music and showing everybody because, you know. Oh, that's great. great. So, yeah. 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 I, so. I, we got to talk about this later. But yeah, I remember I have one CD you gave me at the World Harmonica Festival through one of the Federico Linari group. But that's already yeah. from 2015, from what I saw, right? Yeah, yeah. So okay. w what have you been up to musically like since then? Oh, Is this band stuff, like still you know? existing? Um, yeah, actually, um, the last recordings we made uh, with my group uh, have a, a different uh, formation, you know? Okay. Uh, one of the, the musicians... Uh, uh, remains uh, with the the bass player, um, and then I didn't use drums for the for the last uh, recording, so I have a percussion. And mm, the pianist nice. is 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 different, you know. And a, a good friend of mine, the pianist of the first uh, album is my my aunt. A, okay, a, a great uh, jazz piano player uh, from Buenos Aires. So, yeah, it's it's um, a slightly different plan, you know. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to 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 make a, a, a next recording. Uh, 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 I'm not I'm not sure if this year, but uh, probably next year. Yeah. Um, I will have we have any uh, anyway some recordings uh, like a live session uh, we did. Maybe I, I can tell tell you about that uh, later with the, my 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 friends of uh, the Escuela the Harmonica. Which you mm, you nice. you participated in, uh, of a stream with with Alejandro and yeah, that was nice. Alejandro also shared our stream on Instagram. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. So there, there's a first question by Harmo Active. What diatonic harmonica tuning uh, is best suited to play Argentinian tango music? Uh huh. Whoa, okay. Um, That's very specific. Well, you know, <laughs> in Argentina, we have a, like a, a very big and important tradition of tango music played in the chromatic harmonica. Oh yeah, there's uh, some it, great it, players. It goes from you know Hugo Diaz, uh, who who was a, an amazing player, and he played tango, also folkloric music from from Argentina, and you have. All that school that um, continued with 
amazing players, uh, maybe the, the, the most uh, recognized one uh, these days is Franco Luciani, another yeah. friend and, and colleague. But you, ha you have a lot of, of very good players of uh, chromatic harmonica in the tango. And, you know, as the main instrument of the tango is the bandonion, which is a kind of accordion, and plays uh, most of the notes like in octaves, you know, uh, chromatic harmonica, it's like ideal for that. Yeah, you the, can play every the, note the one. <laughs> as an yeah. octave. Yeah. Um, so... Um, in, in that sense, if you want to play tango like like um, traditionally and, and stuff, uh, chromatic harmonica, I think it's it's the best instrument to use. Anyway, I like to play some uh, Argentinian melodies. Maybe not with the with the tango exactly tango feeling, but you know, using that melodies and maybe improvising uh, stuff and uh, with the with the diatonic. Yeah. Um, I think it, it suits uh, very good in in some occasions. You know, you, you have to be like very clever to to choose uh, how to use it. But but That's it's true. it's totally possible. Yeah, there are some beautiful pieces by P. S. Sola that you can play on the diatonic very well. And there's a totally. video of you performing in Seoul playing Oblivion. So yeah, yeah, that that was. There's crazy. some nice stuff you know, for the yeah, harmonica. first time first time I was there with a pianist. I I I met like uh, ten minutes. Oh, uh, that's crazy! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but but we we, we make it. Uh, it. It was what it was great, and and the people was like very excited. So yeah, it's it's like, what's a great experience. I want then in in my my record the the one you mentioned. Before um, we also recorded uh, one version of Oblivion in trio, you know, piano and, and okay. bass. Yeah. So you said that your aunt is actually a great pianist. So how did your did your family actually influence you, like musically? Um, was the harmonica your first instrument, or did you start with something else? Um, when I when I was a child. I played a little piano, you know, but yeah. mostly as a as a game. You when I was a, like in primary school, and for like maybe a year or so, um, I remember that. But that uh, that was like interrupted, and then I picked up harmonica when I was uh, fourteen, you know, at secondary school. Um, so I would say that harmonica was actually my my first uh, serious instrument. Mm, yeah. Then I went back to to piano uh, to to study uh, different stuff. I I, I I thought it was like important to 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 complement. You know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would say I, I started. You know, I was in in secondary school, and most of my friends uh, played one one instrument. You know, I had a saxophone player. A friend, a guitar player, you know, and we we listen to 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 rock music, uh, Argentinian rock music especially, and harmonica is really important in Argentinian rock music. You know, you, you, we have like many hits of, of Argentinian rock music. Oh yeah, uh, I remember the latest what? video you posted on YouTube. Is that also like some Argentinian music? Music. That's a, a band called Los Redondos. Okay. Who, they don't have. They they have like maybe one one song with harmonica. But what okay. I did with with a couple of of uh, videos is like play all the melodies possible. You know, like uh, voice melodies and guitar melodies and stuff. And you know, make an, a harmonica cover. They play for like three thousand, three hundred thousand people. It's like crazy. They they they, they uh, It's it's uh, it's enormous here. You you wouldn't believe it. Yeah, uh, but but for example, I have to sh I have to I have to teach you. If you come to Argentina, the the um, the most famous harmonica league, uh, you have to know it. It's uh, it's uh, you know C harp. Okay. It goes. It's called tan solo. So that's the first league. Wow, w why is that so popular? Yeah, so we play like three times that, and then we close. Yeah, 
So that's the, the most popular. Uh, and where, where is it coming song. from? Sorry? Where is it coming from? Oh, uh, it, it's, a, it's a, a song called Tan Solo. Okay. You know, and uh, it starts with the harmonica and then uh, the, the the singer plays the, you know, sings the song. Mm. Uh, it's uh, from a band called uh, Los Piojos, which I don't know how to say in in English, but uh, yeah, but it's very famous. When, when you come to Argentina, you play that. And the, the audience is going to cheer at me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. good to know. <laughs> Um, but you know we have like very popular songs, and I wanted to to play those melodies at first and and to jam with with friends. That that was like a, the 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 first motivation. Then yeah, um, uh, th some some uh, things happened next, but that was the like the beginning. So Tina is asking, um, who influenced who influenced you to play the harmonica? Then did you hear it on a uh, recording, or did you hear? player on stage live okay actually well i was in like the first contact with harmonica with what what which i can remember i was at this uh, friend's house and uh, he had uh, like a harmonica in, in in the drawer right there and so i picked it up i liked it the sound and maybe the next day i went i, I told my father to to go with me with, to a musical house and i bought this um plastic blue all blue plastic honer like enthusiastic oh uh, yeah harmonica yeah and i started with that and you know I, i i i learned how to bend the note in that instrument uh like i played that for for some months um uh which uh was great then then i i got some other harps of course Yeah, but uh, that was the first contact. Uh, so my influence was the music I listened at that moment. You know. Okay, so what did you listen to back then? Was it blues actually, or? Uh, actually, the, the the most important was this kind of uh, Argentinian rock uh, okay. bands with. Like, That's you know, interesting. Like yeah. And solo. Uh, I I I, I, I my dream was to play that. You know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I think like at that that at that age, I was also very much into just rock music and in independent rock music, but there was no harmonica in it. Like in, I don't know, rock music right. from from the UK or so, um, because that's what what I liked at that moment. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> so, which are instruments are you playing nowadays? What's your favorite harmonica? Um, so I usually play like crossovers, but uh, with a custom, you know. For example, this yeah. one I, I love. It's a um, it's a crossover, but with the special trendy covers. You know? Yeah. And the um, the the comb is in ebony. Um, here in Buenos Aires, we have like four or five people who custom harmonicas with what i think it's might be a record for a city you know <laughs> yeah uh, so yeah i have a lot of of harps i also loved like the um, you know like the the rockets uh i think it's very nice yeah and the blue the, ones are the lower tuned ones right yes yes uh i i think that they are awesome harps especially for the for the lower keys uh i mean obviously the 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 low ones but also like a g harp yeah it, it's very interesting um and yeah i think those are, are my favorites right now i i used to play you know like golden melodies also okay um but um of course marine band so, so who who does customize your instruments then? Well, I ha I have a couple of of, of people. Okay. Um, you know that my my this one is like a it's worked by two customizers. One uh, Harp Smith Custom, which you can find in um, Instagram stuff. Uh, yeah. One of them is it's uh, my colleague from from the school. You know, Kevin. Um, Uh, well, he wasn't in trusting when we met. Maybe, maybe, maybe you might remember. Okay. Um, um, yeah, th there is a, um, th uh, the other part of the harmonica was made by uh, Javier Sirpolo, who, who is uh, another 
great customizer. But yeah, I uh, I have many custom harps so from from different uh, people. Yeah, but you can probably set up your harmonicas yourself too, at least a little, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so how did you uh, how did you actually learn this? Or what would you recommend to people watching the stream right now? How to get into setting up your harmonica by yourself? Okay, so I I think like the the ultimate offset, you know, that like the the last touch, it's very personal because. Uh, probably I don't use it uh, the same way you prefer it, and yeah. I'm I'm sure my my custom master doesn't play uh, or use it the same way. So uh, that last moment, I always uh, open the harmonica and 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 put the 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 bridge, the I mean the the way I I feel it's it's uh, will respond the, the better. Um, but I don't like, you know, all the comb uh, working or I don't like even tuning, even if I, I, I can do a little bit. You know? Oh, nice. Yeah. But um, uh, but but yes, I, I would recommend uh, to to players, especially if they play with overblows. But if they don't uh, um, like like to check what, what is like their their best offset to according to the the way of of playing you know yeah um, because it, it i i don't think two people have the the same uh preferences for 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 one harp you know so yeah and even if you are working with a customizer closely you still get in there probably and notice like something after a gig oh i should probably i don't know open up five or blow a little bit more <laughs> Right. I, I I don't know if you you have the same experience, but maybe you do because we we play in a similar uh, like approach, you know. Yeah. But for me, some harmonicas uh, are a little bit sharp, you know, in 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 some uh, in in some uh, holes. Um, but for example, when when I go to tune with with some uh, customizer or or whatever, for him maybe it's like exactly. Uh, tuned and for me it's sharp you know okay that, that also yeah. uh, uh, can change you know um, um, uh, because of the you know the, the the amount of air you use and and stuff you know yeah um, and like so, yeah depends on everything depends on your body depends on like how far you take the harmonica into your mouth yeah right that's a lot so, of stuff yeah, to it's, it's, consider it's, that's it's, very personal it's yeah important to 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 have like be be very conscious about uh, how you want your instruments, you know. Yeah. So you also not only play a lot, um, you also teach a lot. Is that right? You're also yeah. teaching online, and you told me like especially like uh, during the last months that you you had like a very regular like Zoom meeting with many Argentinian players. Oh, right. Yes. Yes, is that totally. still happening regularly? Yes. Yes. Okay. You should join one time. It's <laughs> it's a, it's a little bit I late just can't for speak Spanish. because it's like <laughs> it's I mean I think it's 5 a.m. in 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 Germany but you know if if one night you you feel like you you should you should join. <laughs> but yeah in in the last months uh, I'm working you know from home. Yeah. Uh, we are in in Argentina we are in this uh, social distancing um uh, mode. So um, no concerts at all. Yeah, when um, was the last gig you played? I think it was like February. I don't know. Wow, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, in the other hand, like a lot of online teaching, that it's it's great, and I'm very happy that uh, you know more and more people are wanting to to pick up harmonica. Yeah. Um, so th that's that's awesome. Um, and the thing you you ask, ask about the the Fridays, it's um, it's called Viernes de Alumnes, which means like a students Friday. We have we have a harmonica school. I can tell you about that um, later. But in the school, the idea is we have like a very very nice uh, house where the school is. You know, and okay. in the house we have a piano and we have a drums. So. It, uh, 
um, in, in a normal situation, we would uh, gather once a month with all the students and the teachers, we become like the, the band. I play the piano and Ale plays the drums, you know? Yeah. And stuff. And they prepare one song and we have like draft beer and it's, it's beautiful. It's like, like you should come, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds um, great. But yeah, that's uh, like once a month in, in, a, in a normal situation. Of course, right now we, we can get together and we thought about the possibility of doing this uh, students gathering once a, a, a week, but uh, via Zoom, you know? Yeah. So um, the 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 situation is more or less the same. They they prepare one song each, and maybe they play like ten to twelve students per night. Oh yeah, you told me about and that. Yeah, a lot of people uh, connects. Maybe we had like eighty, ninety people watching, and we have fun. You know, it's it's just uh, try, trying to to stay close in in this like particular situation and and also hoping we we can go back to to school <laughs> soon you know yeah of course yeah it's something else to like jam together in one room <laughs> right man yes and of course yes, like the yeah. only thing we can do today is like i don't know trade courses or something <laughs> 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 we can't really yes. play in real time i think last stream at least we tried, but we just like improvised like very freely and not rhythmically. Um, Marco Jovanovic yeah. and me, huh. um, which kind of worked out. I, I did actually didn't re listen. I should. <laughs> 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 Maybe yeah, yeah. it sounded uh, crappy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's very difficult. You know, the technology. I mean, if we, we were going to have like a, a world pandemic this time. At least we we can still make music through Zoom and stuff. It 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 couldn't ha have happened like ten or, or maybe twenty years ago, but the technology is not still there to be able to play. You know, with that that delay, yeah, uh, it's impossible. But yeah, yeah, we, we we do what what we can. So so with all the teaching you do, um, what's the first thing you teach to a beginning student? Okay, um, maybe if 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 it, the um, our lesson is like the first contact with the instrument, you know, yeah. like to breathe through the instrument, like to be able to play like long notes, if possible, clean notes, you know, just one note, yeah, a single note, um, in and out, but especially to 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 be uh, like connected with with this um, uh, breathing situation through the harmonica which is kind of particular and not everybody can can do it like um, uh, immediately you know so um, that, that's like like the the most important thing i think and we usually try to 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 hit like a single note and play you know some melodies in the major scale uh, yeah that's that's the the first nice yeah i think the breathing through the instrument is it's like very important, like yeah. Even in five years after you started. Yes, totally. Yes. So you know, if I, you get I, that right, learned, that's like very important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I I learned or or, or made a lot of uh, st stuff about um, breathing when I studied for a, for a couple of months, like singing. You know. Okay. And then I I became conscious. I'm a horrible singer, but I became conscious of um, some uh, technical stuff about singing that, nice. that were like incredibly good for harmonica, you know? Yeah, same for me. I also had some singing lessons. I'm a terrible singer too. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I mean, it helps. That's the thing. Yes, yes. So so how, how did you develop on the harmonica? Did you teach yourself very autodidactically or did you have some teachers on, on your way? Uh, I started uh, autodidactically uh, with this blue harp uh, yeah. for a couple of months, you know, and, and it, back then there was a, 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 a website uh, in Spanish about with, with a lot of information about harmonica. So 
I, by myself, I, I taught myself how to bend a note and stuff, but at some point I realized I, I needed to, to get some help uh, regarding uh, stuff I didn't need, I, I didn't know. And I wanted also to, to get in touch with, with blues music, you know, with, with, it, it was not so easy back then. Yeah. Uh, YouTube was was not still out there and, and you have to like maybe get a record, you know, and that was much more difficult. Um, so, uh, yeah, I called uh, Nico Smolhan with this an amazing blues player from from Buenos Aires. And he talked to me like for um, for a year or so. Okay. Back then in uh, 2007, I think. So that yeah. was very blues based then. Totally yes. yes. Okay. The first uh, things I I learned with him was like to play all the bands and to play like Tom Blocking and Little Walter. Yeah. You know. You you know Alex Rossi, right? Who, I do, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, he lives in Amsterdam, but he's from Brazil. Mm -hmm, and back yeah. then, he lived with Nico in Buenos Aires, mm, you know, in the same apartment. Okay. So, so uh, Alex uh, calls me Little Walter because when I was going to lesson with Nico, he was there in the other room and and listened to me playing Little Walter. <laughs> yeah. and he still remembers. So, so he, 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 <laughs> that's my nickname name nickname for him. Yeah. But how did you get into jazz music then? Okay, so um, while I still I still was playing with with Nico, um, his friend with Mariano Masolo, and they played together in a harmonica group. You know, like kind of a concert with many harmonicas. Yeah. Um, so one one day, like I I went to the lesson and I, and I had like um, transcribed a, a, a few courses of. I, mean, I, I like the melody of All of Me by Mariano. Mm. Um, and he told me, well, if you like this music, uh, maybe it's time that you continue your study with him. So he called him and we arranged. Um, and I continued studying with Nico like for a brief pre period, um, which I mean, I, I'm very thankful because he was very generous to you know, to say, well, maybe you can continue your, your, your study this way. And anyway, I will teach you whatever else you, you want to, to know about blues and stuff. Yeah. Um, and well, also with Nico, I started playing some over blows, but, you know, Mariano was more uh, like uh, proficient in, 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 in that aspect. Um, so, um, yeah, I went there with Mariano, maybe all 2008, part of 2000, 2009, yeah, like a couple of years. Um, and that was like my last um, harmonica lessons I, 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 I took, you know? Uh, okay. Then I, I took piano and a lot of years of improvisation with a trumpet player. Yeah. You know? um, uh, one, one time we I had a lesson with Howard when he was playing a gig here in Buenos Aires. Okay, yeah. Um, but more sporadic, you know. Uh, yeah. But my 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 two like teachers when I went every every week to their house and and we we saw, saw a song and stuff we were Nico and Mariano. Nice. That's so funny because like, um, actually, Mariano was also the person for me to get into jazz just by seeing his youtube videos yeah and i think like the all the stuff all these old timey songs like all of me and all the gypsy mm -hmm. jazz stuff is like a great way to transition from playing blues to more complex jazz stuff Absolutely. on the harmonica yeah 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 um yeah totally and well in the, in that moment appeared the, like the thing of Okay, how how the harmony works, and you know, um, uh, I have a lot of scales to play in one song. You know, like this yeah. crazy stuff that, that uh, for me it was like a long time to to put together. You know, it's it, it's a lot of information. Um, it's difficult, and it's some things. Um, also, my students want want to know, and I will say, okay, 
be patient and maybe you, you understand one thing at a time and, and you, you will get there, but, but it's, it's a lot of information and especially for harmonica, that is a or diatonic harmonica, that's a, an instrument with, with no, almost no tradition in, in, in jazz music. We have some great, amazing players, but we don't have like a school, a tradition uh, uh, there, right? Yeah. But I think it's fantastic, like especially in South America, like the harmonica scene is like very open and very, very, very much in touch, just like very much in ex exchange about the instrument that like doesn't like hide anything or something. Like everybody's supporting yeah. everybody. Yeah, you, you know, talking to to some colleagues that maybe some have some time some more time in, in, in the harmonica world here in Buenos Aires at least um, you know we, we had like different generations and maybe one uh, like previous generation was more like well I know this and maybe th this is uh, like my thing I gotta keep it to I, myself I <laughs> yeah right uh, but then another generation and I, I think that's totally natural in, in the progression of, of an instrument uh, was more open and said okay We, we all play harmonica, we all play different. It doesn't matter really who who is better or we, we can all learn from, from each other, you know? Yeah. Uh, and we get together like maybe 30 harmonica players to, to, to eat asado, you know, the, in a park. And, and it's like a, uh, like a social thing. That, yeah, that, that's um, fantastic. That's amazing, yeah. Nice. There's a question by Lucas Martini. When playing jazz, what determines the key of the instrument you pick? Okay. The melody, for sure. You know? Um, I, I think in, in, in that sense, like, the melody always should, like, rule that decision. Um Because the idea of, of playing jazz is like to play a song, and and the, the most important thing is like the, that the song sounds nice, and in that sense, like making an advantage of how the notes disposition of a, a harmonica, yeah. whatever key, um, benefit you most to 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 choose it uh, and not choose another one. For example, to play in a major um, a major melody, you, you can use like first position, second position, 12th position, 11th position, whatever. But the final decision is, okay, wh which curves I have, which, which sounds uh, uh, are, are more a benefit for the melody. Yeah. Um, and then the improvisation should work, uh, or at least we study to to make it work in, in different uh, <laughs> yeah. positions, you know? So uh, in that sense, it's maybe more easy. But the melody is, for me, it's, it's everything, you know? Yeah. That's very important. Um, you think we, we can play a song, maybe like a, like a blues jazz thing, or maybe the gypsy jazz song that leads us to jazz? Okay. Uh, anything anything we both know <laughs> yes i think we can play a, like a, a jazz blues yeah okay you, you you have a jazz blues theme in mind uh today i was listening to you know doxy mm, okay yeah you know that i do i never really improvised over it but oh, no, we can try that but, uh, Uh, but that is um, maybe I'm I'm confusing uh, a, a Clifford Brown blues. Oh, there's maybe Sandu. Oh, Sandu, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like um, I don't know. I think the original key is E flat. So. I think I have an. That's one of my favorite jazz blues themes, I think. <laughs> yeah, it, it's amazing for the for the harmonica, you know, all the melodies. Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's very strong. It's, yeah, so I think I, there's a version sure how, of how it. This will work with the delay, but but we can try. 
Oh yeah, I think just like trade courses, I think. Okay. That's the only way we, we can do this. <laughs> but yeah, I think there's a nice version also on YouTube played by Michael Pelican. You know about him? No, I don't know. Oh, you got to check that video out. Um, okay. I think he also played just a lot of saxophone. Also on on a Jason Witchy recording. He's on one of the uh -huh. albums playing saxophone, actually. <laughs> but he well, plays harmonica very well, too. Diatonic? Yeah. Oh, man. Then I, I, I'll, I'll ask you for the name because I'm very interested. I, I don't know about him. Yeah. So you also have an A-flat harmonica in your hand? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you you want to start with a melody, or okay, should yeah. I? That's a nice one. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. 
Oh, that's fun jamming with harmonica people again. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Maxi wrote down the name of the harmonica player and oh, uh, yeah, Michael awesome. Pelican. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, I think that there's a nice video. I think he's very much involved or was involved with Spa a lot. I've oh. never been to Spa. Have you ever been to Spa? I have no. I I would love to, but but okay. I, I hadn't had the chance yet. Yeah. So, what I'm wondering about, like, what are your favorite musicians right now? Like, what kind of music are you listening to at this very moment? Okay. What's in your Spotify playlist? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I listen to to a lot of of, of music, like very different um but for example um wh one of the uh, artists like i think it's like changing the 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 music world is like jacob collier you know it's like incredible um uh, i'm i'm really amazed uh, about everything he does and okay uh, yeah. every time i have the, like the possibility i, I listen to to his new music that you know he's always launching new music so that's great also. <laughs> yeah. uh, but you, you, you have know, to also, nowadays <laughs> yeah yeah uh, but but i also like I, I listen a lot to toots you know i listen a lot to to bill evans um to duke ellington i'm listening a lot to, to duke ellington especially like the orchestra uh, records yeah you know? um and of course, I, I love a lot of um, like sang music, like songs, you know, like the, the song format is one of my favorites. So I, I, I love uh, like a, a lot of uh, Spanish singers, you know, but also like Caetano Veloso, Brazilian. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and that kind of stuff. I, I love it. Um, so and actually, I, I don't listen a lot to music, you know, when I have the opportunity to, to sit down and listen to a record. I think I think I'm I'm very like fortunate, you know. But but maybe that's on the on the on my playlist, you know. Yeah. Recent. Yeah, I also wanna. I mean, I love listening to music. I I wanna listen even more. <laughs> yeah. Maybe yeah. I gotta get gotta get like a good pair of headphones that where I don't have to like worry about cables and stuff <laughs> right, and listen right. on the go a lot that would be good i think yeah uh do, do you listen to, to jazz music or, or also like pop music and classical i don't know mm, you, you that's are, very like, different very yeah as an artist you are like very uh very, you, you have like very a lot of facets so, so i'm not sure what what you listen i i don't know Actually, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what I always get back to is a lot of Brazilian stuff. Um, ah. Talking about like stuff that really has a connection to my harmonica playing like directly. Um, I love so many pieces. Yeah. But um, I also listen to a lot of hip hop, German hip hop actually too. And yep. um, hip hop from other countries and a lot of Afro stuff. There's a lot of nice stuff from France and from the Netherlands, actually. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, that, that would be the stuff you, you could find in my playlist. <laughs> but a lot of Brazilian bossa nova style jazz, That's too. Yeah. Nice. yeah I have listened and if I listen to jazz, I, I think... If I listen to modern jazz, I would always get back to Brett Miller playing just oh, standards yeah, or something. Yeah. yeah. That's like the, uh, the the stuff I enjoy most. Right. And actually, I would say that I have the tendency to listen to more piano players than to sax or trumpet players. I don't uh -huh. know why. That's that's uh, interesting. I I listen a lot to the trumpet players. Yeah. Uh, but but I have like a very strong influence because I told you I studied with the 
with trumpet player um at one point i i almost like thought as my, my harmonica you know like as, as a trumpet I, I didn't mind about harmonica i was interested in 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 melodies you know trumpet melodies so yeah uh so i love like chet baker and uh, a lot of uh trumpet players but lately i i i I haven't listened so much to to do that kind of. Yeah, I mean, I love Chad Baker, but there are really like very few trumpet and saxophone players that I really like. I think I really love on saxophone, of course, Wayne Shorter, and like for for like newer people, like Joshua Redman. Yeah, especially playing soprano saxophone. I love soprano. <laughs> It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Tina is asking, what is your favorite Gerber Mate? Oh, okay, nice. I, I'm drinking Mate, you know, with, with this like uh, fuel for, for Argentinian people. Yeah. Um, and right now I'm, I'm, I'm drinking kind of um, organic uh, stuff, you know, like maybe uh, you buy like a big bag in, in some... Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know how to say, but you don't buy it in the supermarket, you know? Mm, okay. We, we have a, like a, a lot of um, uh, different brands and stuff because we are like very fans of Mate. So, yeah. Oh, somebody was asking about the song title of the Jazz Blues. Um, that's Sandu. Yeah. Oh, I, I see some students here. So, hola. <laughs> That's great. So, besides jazz, you're also very much into classical music and there are a lot of videos of you playing a lot of Bach and stuff. Um, also a beautiful version, which I, it's like a little classic-esque, at least, of Old Friend by Toots. And oh, yes. you're accompanying yourself on the piano. Um, yes. So you 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 didn't have that that like classical musical upbringing. So um, was classical music something that came later into your music after jazz? Yeah, definitely. You know, when I when I studied piano, um, I um. I, I started playing this Bach stuff and, you know, like independence in both hands and mm, yeah. uh, that that's like crazy stuff. Um, and I got in touch with some music there. Also some uh, um, much modern music, like maybe Stravinsky or, you know, Bartok and that kind of, of stuff. Yeah. Um, but I didn't, I, I, I never went to, to music school. So, Everything uh, that that I listened or studied, it's maybe because uh, a, a teacher or a friend recommended, you know, uh, or, or because I, I found it somewhere. Uh, because but but I don't have like this organized uh, uh, way of learning, especially for for classical. But I found that uh, especially back, it's like. I mean, it's it couldn't be better written, you know. It's beautiful music, and it's everything is perfect, and everything it's out there, you know. You, you can find in like maybe 15 seconds with, with whatever piece you want, and you have the score, yeah. And you can start uh, playing, and it's of very very Bach logical didn't. everything, yeah. Yes, right. I mean, he, he didn't write for for harmonica, but um it's very interesting to play like flute pieces uh cello pieces uh, yeah uh, and and stuff um i i find it very interesting to to study you know to to, to i i think it's very very good for for harmonica technique and you are also playing music you are not playing like scales or exercises and you know that also the the music is beautiful and maybe We have like the idea of of make maybe a concert of uh, some pieces on two diatonics, uh, like duet pieces on, on Bach. Yeah. And then some some solo pieces, uh, maybe solo and maybe harmonica and piano. You know, like a reduction or or stuff. Um, 
but yeah that's very interesting and i did also with some uh, classical pieces this thing about uh, like making an, an accompaniment in in maybe one hand you know and then uh, play the, the melody here um i was planning to to play that in in china this year because um you know i was supposed to to play like with, with a backing track I said, no, I don't want to play with a backing track. I will oh, play yeah. a solo mm. concert, you know. <laughs> uh, I have some backing tracks just in case, you know, because sometimes you have to do it and, yeah. and it's it's okay. But I was thinking to to do that with, you know, some Bach solo pieces and some things uh, here. And I was going to buy this uh, kind of uh, uh, Bob Dylan stuff. I don't know how to say it, but the, the, the stand for the harmonica, you know. Oh, yeah. And, and tried to to play both hands and the stand. Uh, what I, I'm I'm not like very um, optimistic about that because you know that like for the pressure, uh, yeah, for, for playing. But that's like an invention that has to be made. Like or like also Howard told me about this that they should make harmonicas which are actually like curved for rack players. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's not uh, not. Not there yet. <laughs> not, not not yet. Not yet. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I I I love to do that. And uh, uh, also, I, I find it very easy to 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 find the material and and study. Not not to play the pieces. Maybe I I'm like a month uh, working with the piece. But you know, uh, there's no hurry, so it's okay. Yeah. So could you give us a taste of playing classical music on the harmonica? Sure. Yes. That would be awesome. Uh, I can try it like a Bach medley, uh, which I haven't practiced, so I might invent some notes, you know? But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Oh, 
nice that was beautiful i want to see a lot of clapping hands in the chat <laughs> yeah that, that was like uh, two parts of the cello suites and like the very famous uh just a joy yeah that uh i almost stole from howard but <laughs> yeah I, I hope he, he doesn't mind <laughs> It was awesome. Um, so, w what the question I have in mind is, um, what was for you like the biggest thing you had to change about your harmonica playing when s starting to play classical music instead of jazz? What's like the main difference? Would you say for like a harmonica player, like technically? It's it's interesting. Um I think in, in, in classical music is like very, very important, like the tuning, you know, maybe more important than, than the, in jazz. Definitely, yeah. And, you know, when, when I play these solo pieces and stuff, I feel like my tone has to be like very big, you know, um, that maybe when, when you're playing jazz, sometimes you are you are more covered because i mean you have the the band the band sounding and and usually like very loud and and the harmonica uh, like mixes there uh, you know so um uh, some things when you play solo are like more subtle you know at at some point you you, you need to to sound like very good uh And in another point, maybe you have to 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 sound like very subtle and not like be like exaggerated, you know. Like, like um, yeah. Maybe um, I focus in 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 that kind of stuff, and also you know like dynamics and and stuff. Yeah, it's I would like say that's a big in, thing. In classical music, it's it's very important, and it's usually everything written, you know. And I'm a I'm a listener you know i i listen and i react and i play that's my way of of, of feeling music um so for me that's like very difficult you know to to follow to the embrace. rules <laughs> yeah yes yes and also as these pieces are not uh designed for diatonic harmonica you also have to be like thinking uh, um, how to adapt uh, all, all that, that stuff oh, written yeah. to something that that sounds uh, nice you know um, that's true that and also all the dynamic wow. stuff really has to like it there, there's a lot of new breathing uh, control involved I would say yes yes totally it's yeah. completely different from playing blues also Absolutely. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Totally. So uh, but what I noticed anyway, Yeah. No, I, I want to, to know what you think about this because you know I, I didn't have really the, the chance to play with a lot of classical form formation musicians. Uh I had much more chances to play with great jazz uh formation musicians, you know? Yeah. But you you, you have like much more experience than, than me in, in, in that aspect. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just I'm just very happy that the pianist that I'm playing with, he is classically trained, but he loves to play jazz also. So yep. <laughs> um he basically learned jazz through his family and his parents and stuff. And he studied classical music. So he exactly knows like where I'm coming from being a like studied jazz musician who wants yeah, to yeah. play classical music. Um, so I just learned a lot of stuff by just playing with him and him maybe just saying like, giving like very, very little suggestions that like made a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. That, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Also, I mean, th there is, uh, for me, it's very important to understand that classical music is, it's also music and, you know, Bach was like a, also like a customizer for organs you know and he wrote music and he played music and um, I mean as harmonica players we have to like 
be free to to interpret it and make it sound good and maybe that's the the most important thing yeah you know um because yeah also we don't have like 500 years of or 300 years of of a harmonica classical diatonic harmonica school so <laughs> yeah but yeah we we're, we're starting the whole thing <laughs> yeah um what i noticed is that you have a very smooth way of articulating um yeah what what would you say like uh, how do you like to articulate your notes can you describe that in some way it's it's difficult um w w especially like um can you give me an example or or, or what oh i'm not sure i was listening to some of your one of your performances in Seoul and I just compared it in my mind to my way of articulating notes um, where which is like j just talking about natural notes that are coming out of the instrument mm -hmm. natural blow and draw notes um, and of course I'm using my tongue touching the upper part of my mouth and I try to do it just very smoothly as when it's needed um, but it sounds even more subtle with you but it's still very very articulated it's still very clear right maybe i haven't thought about this um uh, yeah <laughs> I, i'm not sure what, what to to respond because um yeah i i mean of course i, I work uh, articulation and i can articulate one same phrase in in different ways you know yeah like more staccato or or, or more legato but um I'm not sure, man. I, I think it, it has to do with um, the, the 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 way we we have to like to play very simple things, and that's like in the essence of of every player, you know. And yeah, um, it's very personal, you know. It's I I'm, I haven't uh, thought really about this, but it's very interesting. I yeah. will think about it. Yeah, but there's always that stuff like. Also, I mean, you know that too from like teaching when people are asking you stuff on like, how do you do this and that? And then you can just say, I don't know, I got to play and like see how I actually do it. <laughs> right. Um, Lucas is asking um, another question. Um, how is your study routine nowadays? Okay. Um, at, at these days, uh, I don't have really a study routine. I'm like teaching maybe six to eight hours a day. So wow, I'm that's a lot. Like, really, really busy uh, teaching. Oh, what I'm actually uh, really interested in, like what's the range of, like the age range of the people you're teaching? Like um, are most people older yes, than you I, I, or do you have a lot of younger students too i have a uh, young students i don't have like ch uh, child children yeah um but uh, i have some uh, young students that play kick us you know but like very i think like the yeah. the, the best um and are they also coming students. from argentina yeah, some of them, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, are, are usually like a pre, pre, um, one to one lesson, and now we're on, on online lessons, but, but yeah. yes. And I, I have some students also in like Latin America that are really good players, you know. But um, I would say like maybe the, the youngest is like maybe uh, 17 or stuff. Um, okay. And the older uh, is like in his 80s. Uh, so I have some. Uh, Elder yeah, people. that's a wide uh, range. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a wide, wide range. Yeah, yeah. So I'm teaching a lot, and uh, what I in in this like crazy situation, I had like the the good um, new that um, I, I I was sent some a lot of music to to record. You know, like I had the, the situation of of recording here in my house, which I have like some stuff but not really uh, uh, amazing equip equipment but I, I can record something in, in harmonica um, so I, ha I had been recording this for this month a lot and maybe what I use for, for studying 
is uh, what I have to do in in that moment. You know, what what, what I had to record for for that week, maybe. Yeah. Um, and then I have like some uh, files in my computer that I I know that when I have some time I will pick this up, or maybe I will transcribe that. Or, you know, like, I have like uh, this kind of list of, of things to do. Yeah, there are uh, some amazing transcriptions you did on YouTube. Yes, I love I love it I love it. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, I'm I'm kind of busy and producing a lot of of music which which is uh nice and we're, we're producing something i i can't we can't say a lot of, of about that but we have in hands uh, a very interesting material with with some uh, harmonica players uh, around the world that that was uh, also very very interesting uh, thing to to do in in these months you know yeah yeah talking about the video with mariano so Right. That's coming yeah, out. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we, we are not sure yet, but I think that will be like a, a big thing, you know, for for harmonica world. Yeah. Um, and you know, I had like the, this double role of uh, be a, a player of, of the thing, but also like uh, producing a little bit and and choosing, you know, what to put. Uh, in, That's in, crazy. In, yeah. In, yeah, yeah, it was it was like a very very interesting work and yeah, you um, got to listen like to all the all the players playing the same song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh but well th that's also like a a big thing that happened like in this um crazy time, you know, I I told you I I I have been like mostly at home for the last 5 months, so yeah. So if you are on stage, um, which equipment do you usually use? Or do you have like a favorite microphone to play through or? Yes, I, I usually play with my Shure uh, Beta 57, which yeah. uh, I, I have had it for, for a long time. And I find it very nice for harmonica, you know, it's, it's, uh, it has like a natural equalization that I love for the, for the tone of, of the harmonica. And I usually pick it, you know, and play when I'm playing with a band and stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, so for, for live performances, I, uh, usually that's the setup, very simple, directly to the PA. Uh, I have recorded some stuff with, um, with uh, uh, like an uh, old microphone and amplifier, you know? I don't know a lot of about that stuff, but th yeah. they, they lent me one and it sounded great, especially, w well, we did um, a version of, you know, a Blue Rondola Turk, which is a- mm, Yeah, of course. A, a, a song by Dave Brabeck in, in 9.8, but uh, at, at some point it, it becomes a, an F blues, a jazz blues. Uh, so for that part, I used, uh, that kind of mic microphone and to to change a little bit you know the sound and that's part of a of a nice album uh we did with this uh, second version of my group but it's a, a ho uh, an all harmonica live session with uh, my friends and colleagues from the school Scuola Harmonica we did uh, like one session we we filmed everything like five cameras and we record, record it live, like one one take, and maybe two takes if 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 we had time. Yeah. And that's um that's an album that's it's in Spotify. It's it's out there called Domus Artis Session. Uh, maybe I I will write it down in the in the chat box. Oh and yeah. Also, it's a like a um, DVD, you know. But it's it's actually in YouTube. It's a like a like a audio visual uh, stuff and there i recorded two songs with with my with my group but also you know a lot of nice harmonica to to listen in in different uh, styles and stuff great yeah so if you want to check out federico online i linked all his social media accounts and spotify and stuff in the description box below um awesome. there's Another question left did, by Nick. Did, did you read uh, Alex Rossi comment? I did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he nice. Thank you for one. tuning in. Yeah. 
<clears throat> Did you ever play with Argentinian folk musicians? Um, well, right now, styles or, or genres are, are not like so much divided, you know? I, especially musicians like my age, my, my generation, or or maybe a little bit older, but yeah. kind of, are like in diverse genres. And that's very rich also, you know? But I have played with, with uh, musicians that uh, know very well the, the traditions of Argentinian music and stuff and the rhythms and, and that. But I wouldn't say that are specifically like folkloric music uh, musician, uh, folkloric musicians, because uh, folkloric music here is like a very, very important. Uh, um, it, it's it's like you know there are a lot of really folkloric musicians that play in festivals around the country and uh, with special instruments like maybe uh, like made here you know and stuff. Uh, and I wouldn't say I'm part of, of that movement at all, you know, but I love the repertoire and I love the songs uh, and I have played them, you know, with, with, with some yeah. uh, very nice musicians. Okay. Um, Ingo is asking, what is the most popular brand for diatonic harmonicas in Argentina? Oh, it's a honer. Uh, That's definitely. the right answer. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, but but actually, it's it's one hundred percent true. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we uh, it's it's very important, and you know, it, it's interesting because I have been a honer artist for for some time now, but the the, the magic about honer is that, I mean, my grandmother who who doesn't know everything and anything about about music and stuff knew what honor was you know uh it's it's like very very installed and very traditional and also awesome instrument so i i am i'm very happy with with playing honor and and here honor is it's yeah very important yeah so i think we already like exceeded the hour um but maybe we can oh. wrap this up with uh with a song, maybe a jazz standard we can both play on. Yeah, we can play. Maybe um, I know you play this. Um, uh, there will never be another you. Oh yeah, because I was thinking about that too. Because that's on your CD, right? Yes, yes. That would be a good uh, one. Yeah, I was thinking about that one or Blue Z. Oh okay, Blue Z. Yeah. But yeah, let's do. Good. There will never be another you. Okay, okay. So I I should play it with a with a B flat, I think. In, uh, yeah, in E flat, right? Yeah. Uh. So sh should I start? Maybe play it half a chorus? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you start with the uh, Sandu? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then yeah, I should just start out with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I would just play a half a chorus for the melody, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> okay.
we should, should play a little longer so we can switch between the two parts. <laughs> Awesome, man. That kind of worked out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice. There's Alejandro. Hey, I hope you're doing well. <laughs> hey, Ali. Hope you had a great concert after our live stream. I don't know if that was also like a concert with, I think so, with people being distant from each other. Or was it a live thing? I don't know. What are the possibilities right now in Argentina to to play a live concert yeah i think it was like a streaming sound okay. recorded i'm not sure yeah yeah fingers crossed that this will change and we can be on a regular stage again very soon in front of people <laughs> sitting next yeah, to each other <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, if there aren't any questions left, um, I would just say thank you so much for um, doing the live stream today. Yeah, man. That was very, awesome. Very happy to and it was great to, to great to jam with you, although it wasn't in real time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Uh, I hope that we, we meet uh, sometime soon and we can do it live. Yeah, I'm uh, sure at some harmonica festival. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, and there will be a lot of harmonica festivals next year. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, it was like great fun, and this is this is great. So I I, I am very happy to to be part of uh, this uh, honor constant stream rainfall stuff. You know? <laughs> nice, yeah. And are you actually planning to? come to the World Harmonica Festival next year in Trossingen? Yeah, we have the idea to, to go there with, with like a Argentinian delegation, you know? Yeah. Um, maybe bring some students. Um, it, it would be, last time we were like maybe seven, eight Argentinian people and it would it would be great that, that we are 20 next time. Although I don't know if if Germans will will stand for twenty Argentinians there, but um, um, yeah, we have that idea. It's it's you know very difficult to to say at at this at this uh, yeah. time, but hopefully yes yes I, I I would love to and I have uh, I know many people that that would love to to be there next year yeah yeah bringing all your. 17 and 18 year old students that can play better than us <laughs> yes, yes 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 hopefully nice yes, the, the tonic competition should should be full of argentinian people oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow that's why i never participated in a competition <laughs> that's real right yeah yeah 
Nice. So well, we we didn't talk about judging, but it, I, it's it's a oh, topic yeah. I, I would like to discuss uh, so, next time with you. <laughs> yeah, it can be a lot of fun sometimes. <laughs> I, I know, I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Um, the next Honor live stream will be. <laughs> That's a good question. I gotta look, gotta look into my calendar. <laughs> the next date will be um, September third, um, same time. It's a Thursday at 9 p.m. Central European Summer Time, together with Tom Lin, um, who's mainly a big harmonica teacher here on YouTube. Um, so I'm excited for that. Stay tuned. Um, thank you so much, Federico. If you're interested in Federico's music, um, check out the description box. You can listen to his Spotify. Um, or, yeah, what, what's the best way for people to um, support you right now? Yeah, maybe it's Spotify. And you, you can add me on Instagram. And if you're interested in lessons and stuff, just write me a text and we, we can chat. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, follow him on Instagram. <laughs> that's important do it now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> perfect okay um, I hope you have a great evening a great day wherever you are and hope to see you in, in two weeks from now um, until then bye bye <laughs> <laughs>